Hello, YouTube. Car guys and gals from across the globe. Thanks for tuning in. And I want to show you this 1950 Studebaker. It's now, of course, Hemi all-wheel drive. I want to show you some of the ways that I got it to this phase. If you haven't seen the other videos, I encourage you to check them out. But let's take a look at how I sectioned this bed real quick, and you'll get a sense of how it got the way it is. When I cut this steel, I often use the cheapy Harbor Freight cutoff wheels, and they're okay, they cut right, but they, they burn up real quick. And I also tried the ones from Home Depot, and those are pretty good, they last better than the Harbor Freights, but they're twice the price, so eh. Um, the main thing is all the debris that goes in the air, and that drives me nuts. It gets in your nose, you eat it, it's just crap, you know? So uh, my buddy suggested one of those diamond cutoff wheels like that they use on a partner saw on a construction site. And I was like, I don't know, man. You know, he goes, oh, Fastenal sells them and they're freaking 20 bucks or whatever. I start looking around and I found the exact one that he uses. Uh, it's a Lennox and I tried it. And honestly, the thing cuts like butter. It's scary because, you know, it's scary. But so you be very careful. And it, it really, we'll see if it really does do 30 times the cutting as your standard cutoff wheels. But so far, it makes a real nice edge. And that's what I'm doing right now is sectioning this bed. I'm taking a section out of it. We did some uh, deductive measurements last night, and we figured out that we need to take off about four inches out of the front side of this uh, bedside. And then it will position the wheel where we want it, and it'll look proportionately correct when we set this thing on the ground. So what I need to do now is cut out my four inches, then I'll re-weld this on and we'll have one bedside completed. But so far we're going to try these wheels and uh, I like what I'm seeing. the way I want it and all I have to do now is position this at the right height and the right distance away from the cab then I can attach the sides but for right now this is the next piece let's get it on you're like the lion who sits in his cage he's useless yo 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 mocked up into position that it's going to be in so I know where everything's going I just have to permanently attach it and then I can start patching the floor so that's what I'm about to do right now all of this is going to need to be cleaned up and I'm going to build a little patch panel that goes all the way well several patch panels that'll go all the way across but that'll seal this in and then I'll be done with this engine bay well not really done are you ever done <laughs> uh, battery box inner fender wells yeah, so there's still a ton to do, but I just trimmed this off and got all this permanent. So <clears throat> the hood line, the shut lines, everything is as close as I'm going to get it. So let me get back to this. Let's patch it up. And while I'm letting that paint dry, my buddy stops by with his lovely 500 horsepower Mustang. That's Pete. He's another aging dork like myself, but it's always cool to watch him do a burnout as he leaves because oftentimes he loses it. But uh, back to the build. Yeah, there's nothing like watching a 500 horsepower Mustang do two complete donuts in the street because the driver's a bone cold idiot. But uh, you also don't get to see in these videos the amount of hours it takes to do this stuff. You see these things and they happen in 5, 10, 15 minutes, but the reality is it's several days, and you know that. Anybody that works on cars knows this stuff doesn't happen overnight. But I like to make it seem like it's a lot less involved than it really is because it's worth it. It's so cool. Stay tuned. Now that the floor is all completed, all I have to do is run the wire loom through it and get this thing temporarily wired so that I can move it under its own power. And that'll be exciting. I do need to build a binnacle for the dash 
cluster, but it's going to sit basically like that. I'll encase it, make it look old, you know, mix of old and new. That's, that's as best as you can do on something of this caliber. This is not an expensive truck. Make no mistake. Of course, this is basically what they say, cobbled together, thrown together. They are, but they're not. I make them as watertight as I can get them for the age. I make them reliable and I make them fun to drive. So that's exciting. That's why I build them like this. You can go do the whole gas monkey, order parts, $50,000 for this, $20,000 for that. That isn't what this is. This thing is designed for the guy come home from work, getting something cool, burn it up to the ice cream stand, do a burnout, and bring it back. It's just a toy. So, you know, you don't need a lot of money to play with toys. What's that guy in Iron Resurrection say? Wire them up and fire them up, <laughs> right? That's the hope, isn't it? So we get it all plugged in. Let's hit the key. Is it gonna run? I don't know, it ran before. It should run again. Eh, that ain't good. There we go. You fix it. You fix it. Can you fix it? <laughs> I don't think you can fix it. I've got a few codes that keep showing up in here and the main problem right now is that it's in limp mode where it only allows 35 miles an hour or something like that um, until the problem is corrected and what I have are I, I believe wheel speed sensors that are all rusted up and corroded and the reason is this truck sat for so long it took me over an hour to get the, the rims off. <laughs> I had to use an air chisel again and peel off those stainless covers that go around each lug nut. And uh, I was able to get it though, so that part's cool. As far as the codes, we'll get to those. I'm not too terribly concerned. Got to do this filler tube, which I'm basically going to flip it over and run it through underneath the bed floor. It's going to come through and make a tight left and come right up out into this so that when you put fuel in this truck, It'll fuel just like it did back in the day. That part's cool. Oh, do you, you can't reach. <laughs> Thanks. Hi, guys. Look, did you go in here? What's in there? You can't get in there. <laughs> you guys are dorks. Go play. Go on. ABS sensors and the um, traction control sensor. So that's pretty good. Let's listen to what a Studebaker with a Hemi in it sounds like. Sounds like all the rest of them. And in all this old junk that I deal with, I found this really old can of spray paint. And you know it's old because when's the last time you've seen a cap, uh, a spray tip that looked like that? Yeah, it's been a minute. 348? Yeah, I got to think that's at least 20 years old. Does it spray? Yeah, I didn't think so. It looks cool on the shelf, but guess what? <clears throat> yeah. This thing just keeps looking like a piece of art more and more. I know some people would say piece of something else, but I think it's a piece of art. It looks cool. This thing, when it's outside in the sun, you start to feel the aggression that it has. It's more than just this old truck on a newer chassis. It's got this, this wide, low, almost race truck feel. I know that sounds strange. You could use it on the work site or you could literally use it on an autocross track. I don't recommend it, but it's cool, isn't it? This thing just gets cooler and cooler by the day, doesn't it? Well, it does for me. And uh, once again, I want to thank you very much for watching. Thank you for your cool comments. I try to reply to each and every one of them. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share everywhere you see fit. This truck is on its way to getting plated, and down the road she'll go. And hopefully the next time you see it, it'll be at a car show. Hopefully one near you. So come see me, stop, say hi. Thank you again so much. 
I'll see you soon.